Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar at the State of Biotech in Canada. This month, biotech is in the spotlight, and we are having a campaign right now highlighting the importance of this sector in Canada and Latin America. I'm your host, Miriam Desarte, working for Latam Startups, a nonprofit organization helping startups to scale. Our main offices are located in Toronto, Canada. So, um, if you have any questions, please um, send us to contact at latamstartups.biz or through the hashtag latamstartups. Once we finish this webinar, we'll be answering your questions. Um, so anytime, guys, if you actually um, have questions after the webinar, so you, you can also email us and we will be happy to actually help you with any questions or comments you have. So let's just start this webinar. Canada has a long and proud history in development of modern biotechnology. I'm not sure if many of you know, but Canada was uh, discovered the insulin in 1922. The isolation of DNA by um, Canadian scientific in, in 1943 and the licensing of uh, the first polio vaccine in 1955, the development of early uh, form of canola in 1974, and the first Canadian biotechnology company founded in 1981, that actually won the Nobel Prize in 1986 and 1996. 1996. Canada was also the first country in the world uh, grow commercial biotech crops in 1995, and also was testing uh, the first biofuel yet in 2012. As recent contributions, Canada has developed a vaccine for Ebola. Canada certainly has a strong ecosystem in biotechnology and keeps developing and improving uh, products and services in this sector. With all this background, Canada is still looking forward to be in the top of three economies in the world regarding biotechnology by 2025. The OECD has defined biotechnology as one of the ter one third of the total world economy. This includes biomass and the integration of biotechnology across sectors. In order to reach the top three countries with bioeconomy, Canada has launch an initiative to identify the additional policies and programs needed to ensure Canada's biotechnology ecosystem reaches this goal. This is an easy initiative uh, that is in coordination with government partners, industries, um, industry and stakeholders involved, involving the following, people and partnering, financial and investment, supporting regulation and leadership. The initiative is called Biotech Canada and believes by working together Canada biotechnology ecosystem, industry, academia, and government will create one of the strongest and most successful bioeconomies in the world. So that's the goal for now in Canada. Canadian advances in biotechnology research and development are already leading to the innovative therapies to allow for early identification, prevention, and even of costly and debilitating illness and diseases. So for example, uh, here are at least four good examples that uh, you know uh, Canada is doing in research and development. So researchers in the, at the Western University has developed uh, the world's first uh, HIV vaccine that is based in a kill hole, the HFB1, HIV1, much like uh, like kill the whole virus vaccines for polio, influenza, and hepatitis A. That's the first picture you see the, there. This, this was a great news that uh, we had, you know, recently with uh, Western University. In Gen Inc. in Montreal has developed as well a, ha a highly uh, flexible nucleotide DNA and a RNA 
AI delivery technology targeting mucosal tissues, technology that can be used to treat, prevent, and chron chronic diseases of gastrointestinal tract, lung, and bladder, as well as treat conditions such as di diabetes, anemia, and hemophilia. Montreal-based Inovia Pharma Corp has developed also a promising enzyme uh, replacement uh, therapy that is called as, uh, asphotase alpha to treat patients uh, with hypophosphatasia, sorry, the name is a little bit long, as uh, several genetic bone disorders that cause a skeletal, a skeletal deformity, several muscle weakness and organ damage. And that can be debilitating. And when this illness is developed in the uterus, it's often um, deadly for the fetus. There is another company in uh, Monovacin Inc. This is a clinical stage vaccine development company created 10 years ago at the Lucy uh, University. It has used its patented um, Depovax vaccine adjunct. Uh, adjuvant platform to develop therapeutic cancer vaccines designed to stimulate the body immune system to destroy cancer cells in patients who have breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostatic cancer. Um, that's part of the research and development in Canada. But also there are some other developments in subsectors. Uh, biotechnology is also transforming uh, traditional Canadian industries like agricultural, aquaculture, forestry, mining, energy, and chemical manufacturing, leading uh, the development of new products and applications that are more environmental friendly than their traditional counterparts. Some good, uh, some good examples you will see there. We have also about uh, four or five examples is, for example, the Okinawa specialty uh, in fruits in British Columbia, uh, which is this really uh, beautiful region here in Canada. They have developed Arctic apples, a non browning fruit that, that has been modified to stop natural enzymes browning, and is working on biotech solutions to make apples and other tree fruits resistant to deadly diseases. This is the kind of uh, picture you will see here. And um, then uh, the Agrisoma Bioscience Inc. in Saskatoon has commercialized a resonance ca carinata, an industrial oil seed mustard that has been genetically engineered to produce high quality vegetable oil for biojet and biodiesel fuel. And that can be grown in semi-arable um, land, which is just it. And this is this one here. Then um, bio amber in Sarnia to commercialize bio-based um, so, succinic acid, which was um, with, has a range of applications, including uh, for poly, polyurethane, polyurethane coating uh, adverse uh, creating new commercial products usable for environmental reclamation projects. So all these commercialization projects are coming from the research and development that we have seen, you know, in, in the other examples, um, which is great. Yeah, here in Canada, we have a very, very, very strong um, uh, biotech ecosystem in that matter. So, uh, 
Based in the Biotech uh, Canada ecosystem report, most of the biotech research and development takes around 10 years or more to move from labs to commercialization. And uh, in order to survive this period of development until biotech startups actually generate some revenue, most biotech startups will require uh, support in business, funding, legal and regulation advices. From leaders in the biotech ecosystems to big entrepreneurs in these sectors and investor is clear. Canada must attract skilled entrepreneurs and managers to support biotech companies and to continue to enhance collaboration across the biotech community. Really important for international biotech um, companies, especially for those that are um, watching this, this webinar in Latin America. Uh, we believe this is a great opportunity for you to come here to Canada and try to develop your, your products here for commercialization. Now, um, as an example of one of the strongest communities in Canada, we are taking some notes from government of Ontario. And uh, just in Ontario, there is over uh, 5,600 life sciences establishments, and over 80% of them are in the medical devices and equipment or research, testing and medical laboratory seg uh, segments. Ontario has a large and vibrant uh, life sciences sector, uh, 5,600 companies that I mentioned before employ 82,000 people in the province. Jobs in life sciences are high qualified uh, with wages um, that are 20.5% higher than those that are in provincial average. Ontario life science industry generate at least 40 billion in revenue, making a significant economy uh, sector uh, for the province. Drugs and pharmaceutical sector is the largest subsector between, uh, within the life sciences, generating approximately 60% uh, of the industry in revenue. Not all is good in biotech, venture capital and investments has uh, decreased in the last years. And this is one of the big concerns uh, in the province of Ontario. And in general, in Canada, this tendency has seen as well uh, in the USA. Um, so you can see here probably the most um, uh, the most investment right now is in a later stage for sure. You know, you can see here some of the conservative part of Canada uh, as an um, investment country. Um, this, this, is, this is also affecting other sectors. Normally, investors are conservative in compared with Americans in that way. Uh, so they kind of like invest in later stage. Um, there, there are also investment in seed and early stage, but you can see here it has decreased since 2011. Now, uh, these numbers are from uh, 2013, and um, uh, the report actually was made in 2015. So um, as the report mentioned it, uh, it's also very, very, very uh, difficult to uh, actually get like uh, updated numbers just because um, this sector is, um, is, is difficult. As we mentioned before, uh, a company really needs like 10 years to develop something that they will commercialize. So they really need like a 10 years at least for research and development to actually get to a final product. And that's in, in most of the cases, the better case for many of them. So uh, this is something that we need to improve for sure. And uh, I think the government of Ontario and as well, the government of Canada is doing, uh, um, are doing a work to actually attract more investment and to encourage investors to put money uh, in this sector.
So Ontario has tremendous strength as well in agri-food and industrial biotechnology. A recent economic impact analysis report uh, in an analysis report uh, showed that uh, the food processing industry alone now employs more than more people in the province than in the automobile sector, for example. Uh, and in, in conclusion, we say that these subsectors in biotechnology, life sciences sectors contribute to Ontario overall economy, employing more than 83,000 people, highly skilled workers, ranking in Ontario among uh, the North American top clusters. So um, if you are actually um, curious about more numbers in this um, in this specific sector and uh, you know about uh, the biotech in Ontario or the biotech in Canada, there are certainly two good reports that we have seen, um, you know, to, to make this webinar happen with the basics of uh, biotech in Canada and the biotech in Ontario in specific. So if you need those reports, we're happy to pass along those reports to you. If you send us an email, we, we can, uh, you know, share those reports with you are, are for public uh, knowledge. So you can get some, some more insights because are really long reports and we are putting everything together here for 50 minutes or, uh, of a webinar for you guys. So now it's time for uh, questions and comments. Uh, if you would like to send us your questions to contact at latamistartups.biz or to hashtag latamistartups, Please uh, let us know, and we are happy to add you um, in the uh, uh, <laughs> to answer your questions or your comments. Uh, in the meantime, while you uh, send us um, these questions or comments, I would like to let you know that we have another webinar. This one is more is is longer. It's for about forty five minutes because we have some guests invited. Uh, from the biotech uh, sector in Canada and Latin America. These guests are experts in this uh, sector in a specific. And we are going to have a conversation about challenges and opportunities in the biotech sector. Also, if you are watching this webinar and you have a biotechnology company, uh, let me tell you that we are having another LATAM chats as biotech in the spotlight. Um, if you... Uh, was uh, if you were aware about our last campaign, it was FinTech in the Spotlight. We normally invite startups in uh, these different sectors to have a conversation over that. So we talk about, you know, how you started, uh, what has been your, uh, your challenges, and uh, as well the opportunities that you see in this market and what are your necessities like um, uh, where's your next what is your next step when um, are you going to scale up to new countries are you just in research and development at this point so all that conversation happens in uh, twitter and, and this time it's going to be on february 22nd so if you are going to uh you want to be part of the chat please send us a note as well and we are happy to add you to the conversation. Finally, if we don't have more questions right now, I think we're good. So if you have questions uh, or comments later on when you see this webinar, uh, please send us, uh, you know, to contact at latamastartups.biz or to the hashtag latamastartups. It has been my pleasure to present this webinar to you. My name is Miriam Lazarte and um, Thank you for being today here with us. Uh, I'll see you in the next webinar. Bye now.